Hey everyone! In this video I'm going to show you how to track time entries within QuickBooks Online. You can upgrade to the QuickBooks Time feature, but for this video I'm going to show you how to do it within QuickBooks Online. Before you do anything, you're going to need to make sure you have your settings correct. You would go to the gear icon and go to Account and Settings. And here I'm just going to go to Time. And I'm just going to check my settings here. I'm going to make sure my service field is on. I'm going to make sure Allow Time to be Billable is on because I want those time entries to be able to pull right into an invoice. And I am going to choose the option to show the billing rate to users entering time. That way, as I'm entering time, I can also put in the rate. This would be really useful for a company that has different rates for different customers. And then I'm also going to make sure on the sales side, I can show the product and services column on sales forms and track the quantity and price rate. Under products and services, I already set up this consulting services item. I did not put a price, but if you have the same price for each one, you can put that sales price here. Or you can add multiple items. For example, if you have different rates for different services, you can add all of those here as well. I'm going to keep it simple in this example and just use one service and just change the rate as I enter time entries. So here I am back to the time tab and I'm going to show you how to add a time entry. Okay, I'm just going to click on the employee, the test employee that I have set up. And here I can go to the date that I want to track time. I can do this week, last week. I can go to different days throughout the week. Or I can click on custom and I can go back to another date, forward. But just to show you the example, I'm going to just start with this week. I would put the time entry here. Now I can put start and end times. It defaults to 15 minute increments, but I can change it if I do less than 15 minute increments. I personally track time in six minute increments. So for me, it's just easier to enter the duration, which is what I'm going to do here. Let's say I spent one hour on a consulting service for test customer one. And here again, I can put start and end times. And then I'm going to choose my product. This is from the products and services list. I'm going to choose consulting services and I'm going to click on this little box that says billable per hour. Now let me talk to you about a couple of different reasons you would check or uncheck this billable per hour feature. If I am billing customers by the hour and I want to be able to enter the time entries and pull those time entries directly into an invoice, to bill by the hour, I would probably choose this option. I would not choose this option if, for example, I choose I bill a customer a flat rate every month and it doesn't really matter how much time I work on that client, they're going to get charged the same rate, but maybe I still want to track my time because I want to be able to keep tabs on how much time I'm spending on that particular client. So for this example, I'm just going to choose billable per hour so I can show you how it pulls into the invoice and I'm going to do a custom rate of $100. And in the notes, I'm just going to put consulting session number one. You can put any notes of what you did. The, you can enter a lot of information in here if you want to give a pretty decent size explanation of what you did. Okay, I can save it now or I can just keep entering time entries and save it at the end. I'm going to add another one. This time I'm going to add two hours to customer two. Same service. And let's say this client pays $120 an hour. Okay, I'm going to save this again. Now, let's go to Tuesday. Let's say I did another session for client number one. 
Okay, I think I'm going to add a third customer so you can also see an example where I use a flat rate. So let me add that real quick and then go back to time entries. Okay, I'm going to add that. I'm going to add another time entry. And this time I'm not going to choose billable per hour because I'm going to assume that customer number three is a flat fee service. Okay, so now that I have a few time entries in, I'm going to make some invoices and show you how that's going to look on the invoice side. Now, when you're on this screen, you have, see how it says unbilled income? It shows me right here some unbilled time activities that I can choose and I can start an invoice right from this screen without going to the customer. It, notice that it doesn't show me test customer number three because I didn't mark that time as billable. And then if I want to go back to the place where it just showed me all the customers, I would just say clear filter view all. Okay, so I'm going to click on customer number one and you can see that there are a few time entries here. And I'm just going to say new transaction here or I can just click on convert to invoice and it'll bring that time entry automatically into the invoice and I can add the other time entry as well. And notice that it put my description here as well. Now it doesn't show the date because the settings for these invoices must not include the date, but I can change that in my settings if I want to. I can customize it and create a new style, but I'm just going to leave it as is for now. And I can change the the description right here if I want. If I want to add more details here, I can. Or I can go back to the time entry and update it there. But since I've already brought it into the invoice, I'm better off to just go ahead and update it here. Okay, so I'm going to save this invoice. Now, let's say I changed my mind and I want to go back and I want to take one of these time entries off. Let's say I decided to hold off on billing for session two. Now it's going to ask me if I want to unlink it. If I unlink it, it's going to put it back to open so I can put it on a new invoice later. Or if I say no, keep it, then I'm basically not going to ever. That's if I decide never to bill my client for that time. So I'm just going to unlink it and then I can save and send. And I have other videos related to invoicing. That's not the focus of today's video, but I still want to point out how you how you go from the time entry to the invoice. Okay, I'm going to add it back and I'm going to save and close. Let me go to test customer number two. I would do the same thing. I can I can just create an invoice up here or I can you know use that other button um, I can use the add all there's just a lot of different ways to do invoicing okay I want to show you one last thing because remember customer number three did not have a billable time entry I didn't mark it as billable so when you come here there's nothing here so if I go to add an invoice there are no time entries to put in so let's just say I do flat fee I would just have to put in I, I wouldn't be able to bring the time entries into the invoice I would just instead invoice add a flat fee so that would look more like this Okay, and then one last thing that I want to show you is under reports. If I go to time activities by customer detail, I can change the dates as needed, but notice how the report shows me all the time entries. So I can see all the time that I worked for the month, but I only build by the hour these first two clients. The third client was a flat fee, so I'm not billing it 
it says no here it's not billable but like I said in the beginning I still want to track time for flat fee clients because I want to know how much time I'm spending on that particular client I do want to point out that QuickBooks is always changing and updating their software so this is how the time entries look right now but it could change as QuickBooks updates and changes their software over time but the concept should be the same the concept should not change so thank you for watching and let me know if you have any questions in the comments